Hey y'all, welcome back to the Team Local Fit Roundtable. And this week I'm joined with Coach Lauren, AKA Blonde. If you're new here, we have to differentiate because obviously we're both named Lauren and that gets a little confusing. So she's just blonde. And honestly, we were having the most blonde moment ever for about <laughs> 20 minutes setting this up. So I think actually the name is pretty fitting, although oh my God. it's, I was a part of it, so it's not really like it's any better. Um, but my black hair did not balance out that situation. We really, really struggled there. <laughs> and oh, if anybody's ever tried to record something, um, you know, I was gonna say electronically. I guess this is electronically, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Not in person, it sometimes there's technical difficulties, and we couldn't hear. Like I couldn't hear Lauren. She could hear me, but I couldn't hear her. And literally for like 20 minutes, we're like, okay, exit out of here. The, the good old like restart your computer and hope that that works. And let's plug this in and unplug. Oh my gosh. You, you should have seen me the other night. Um, me and uh, Olivia were trying to watch a movie and I like just don't really do stuff on our TV. Like I just don't really watch TV on my yeah. own. And I don't know how to switch between like Netflix and cable and like a movie and like I just don't know how to do that so literally we were trying probably for a good like 20-30 minutes trying to figure out how to play a, a just TV. to get that yeah it was yeah. so bad I'm calling Ryan he's already asleep and the next day he's like what is wrong with you guys <laughs> and she's like I went to art school I don't know what we're doing and I'm like I can't find <laughs> plug for this like it was so embarrassing I don't even want to tell you that at some point at the beginning of this video, you started to cut out and I didn't see or hear you. So hopefully that uh, corrects itself when we actually put it out there. But of course that would happen. Of course this whole thing would happen. Like we just got off a team call. Everything was fine. There Perfect. were no technical difficulties. And then she's like, all right, I'll call you in 15 minutes. And somehow in between that time, everything went to shit. So <laughs> such is our life, but yep, here we yep. are literally 30 minutes later. It's four 30 <laughs> my time. And we said four o'clock. So <laughs> sick, but we're here and we are excited yes. actually to, we're really excited to record this episode because it's mm -hmm. something that we deal with a lot, not only for ourselves, but with our clients. And this is something yeah. that we've seen over and over and over again with clients um, and ourselves. We can use a lot of experience here. And that is working through a set point or changing your set point for anybody who doesn't know the whole like theory of body fat set point is that basically you know once you kind of reach reach an adulthood age you t you settle around this kind of area right and it's like your body is homeostasis your body's comfortable amount um obviously when people are very very underweight or they're very, very overweight, they are kind of pushing past their natural set points. And there's different theories and arguments as far as like, can you change that? And does it change over time? And like, we're not really here to talk about that, but we're mm -hmm. more so talking about if you're at a healthy, comfortable body fat level, um, and then let's say you try to get very, very lean from that, or you just wanna get, you know, hey, I wanna shred up for a photo shoot, or I wanna look really great for this vacation, um, and you always feel like your body's fighting you, can you change that to what extent? And if you're constantly fighting that set point, what to expect um, from that? So I know that we both are people that have, you know, we deal with this kind of on a constant basis. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say, so for me, no matter how much, and my body weight and body fat has fluctuated a lot over the years, just from all of the competing that I have done. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, now I'm kind of in this place where I'm a lot more regulated, but it took a really long time because there really was no set point for me because I was always constantly moving it. Um, and I think that's where people really struggle because they're kind of, they're always going up and down and not really spending enough time in a certain body fat and or body weight area to kind of know like, Hey, is this comfortable? Um, you know, how's my body responding? How am I recovering? And that's really what we want to get into as far as what to look for here. So I want you to touch on this first because we were just, we were just dieting, um, yeah. for you and yeah you know, kind of seen, not necessarily, I don't say the repercussions, but like, Hey, you know, I got to a place where it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I feel pretty comfortable here, but as soon as I'm not doing all of these things, my body wants to go back here. Yeah. So this is kind of what I was just telling Lauren is I have, as Lauren has dieted kind of cyclically for years now, just with competing. Um, I've never really held out of maintenance per se. It's always kind of been surplus um, 
deficit, surplus, deficit, never just maintaining at a weight. And now I'm at a place where I'm not competing anymore. I really want to work on my actual fitness level. Um, as far as CrossFit training goes, things like that. So my goals have shifted and I did want to lean out a bit, but kind of continue to enjoy my life and get to more of a maintenance place. Um, what I noticed happened was, um, as has been the case in my past, and for anybody that has kind of like chronically dieted, you know this, it is very difficult to start getting under certain weights. And the leaner that you get, the harder it is to get past yes. those certain weights. So I'm just going to be very straight up and give some numbers because this just happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, my body is pretty comfortable between 140 and 145. I'm 5'6". If I don't try very hard, I can pretty much maintain in that range comfortably. Um, by not try very hard, I mean not do um, really any cardio and eat mindfully, but still like enjoy myself. I can stay in that range. To get under 140, even to like 139, is challenging for me. Get to 135, it is very challenging for me. Yes. And then to get under that, it takes a lot of effort. So yes. we ended up dieting down to me getting to about 133. I like how I look at that weight. However, how I feel is not worth it. So unless I am dieting down for a show, and I think Lauren kind of noticed in my check-ins, I was saying that I didn't feel good in the gym. Um, I mentally kind of felt this need to binge almost like mm -hmm. not full blown, um, disorder binge or anything of that nature, but I was just feeling very restricted. And for what I'm not competing. Um, there was no real point. So she said, you know, you're going on this trip next week. Let's not track. Let's not weigh, um, chopped off my cardio. So I'm doing, um, not a lot anymore, which is great, but coming back from the trip, I did get on the scale this past weekend um, about, I gave myself about a week after the trip to kind of like get back into my routine, things like that. And from the time that we kind of increased calories and then had the untracked week, um, the drop in cardio, I'm up about five pounds. And to some people that might sound like a lot in two and a half weeks or whatever it's been, but the reality is that what I was doing to be 133 for literally two weeks, mm -hmm. because that's as long as I could hold on to it without feeling like absolute trash. My training went to shit. Um, and that's not my goal right now. My goal is to have better training. So why would I stay there? So I need to come to terms with the fact that I'm not starting from a place of extreme weight loss need. So for me to change my set point down to 133 and actually be able to hang there without doing a lot of cardio being pretty liberal with my diet is not realistic for me. It's not. And what I was doing to be there is also not realistic for me long-term. And that's where I think the conversation, because I think people will hear this and they'll say, oh, so then I should, should I not diet? First of all, um, in this context, Lauren was already at a healthy body weight. She just wanted to get mm -hmm. there, which is very yeah. different than somebody who's overweight or over overweight or obese who needs sure. to diet for health reasons. Now, I will say that if you have been um, and this is where I'm not going to argue with like the, the theory and kind of all that, but the longer yeah. that you've been overweight, the harder it is to stay at a lower body weight, but it is possible. And you do need to do that for your health. It's not, that's not about abs anymore. That's not about anything yeah. vanity related. That is absolutely hundred percent related to health. But mm -hmm. in this situation, um, you know, you really have to take the goals of the client in consideration. So for Lauren, her, she said, Hey, I really don't know if I want to be dieting for physique reasons anymore. I really want to improve, you know, CrossFit and training. So as soon as somebody says that, that's a completely different goal. You can be heavier and you should be heavier. And we should be focusing our nutrition on fueling, training, and recovery. And you're not going to be able to do that if you're always in a deficit. Um, and the cool thing actually about set point is, you know, and this is where, you know, again, it just depends on the goal, but the longer that you stay at a weight. So I will use my example for for myself for this year haven't well i guess last year because this year is only it's only march <laughs> um, i competed for anybody who doesn't know i get i get comments on this all the time hey so like have you ever competed before or like hey do you track macros like i know you don't like, talk about that anymore and i'm like um yeah so for anybody who doesn't know because that could be some people i competed from 2011 all the way through 2018 i competed as an amateur and a pro I've done like 22 23 shows and I competed a lot, lots of back-to-back -back with very little rest. So after my last season in, at the end of 2018, I said, I'm not competing 
for a very long time. Um, my body basically took a whole year to even get back to normal. So I would say from last September to now, another like six months, so about 18 months off of dieting, I look completely different at a similar body weight. Mm -hmm. Not completely different, like, oh, I'm a different person, but yeah. I really haven't changed that much on the scale besides obvious fluctuations. Um, and I look a little bit denser muscular wise and I look a little bit leaner and things just have settled better. So it's really, really interesting how time can change things. And when we talk about, Hey, you know, don't try and, you know, your set, your set point. Well, now it's kind of more known as like your settling point. Cause of course there's always going to be like variations like up and down. Um, you know, when you are kind of in this area, that's really where you need to focus on. Okay. Can I dial in my training? Can I dial in my nutrition? Um, yeah. how is my recovery looking? Like how is the rest of my life looking? Because if you're always chasing that bottom point of your, the bottom end of that settling point and you're constantly fatigued, constantly feeling like shit, that's when you make no progress. And that's when the things like, Oh, I'm going to start overeating happens. And that's yeah. when, Oh, I don't make any gains in the gym. I might even get hurt more frequently. Um, yeah. things of that nature. And that is so, so common. And that's why we very much preach to clients. Hey, when you take time off, we're taking time off. We don't get to diet every few weeks because you want yeah. to, but when it's time to diet, it's go time. And we're going to have to push past all of those really uncomfortable things. Yeah. And I was also going to say, when we say finding a set point and like hanging out there and maintaining there, I'm not talking about, Oh, I'm, I'm maintaining this weight, but you're tracking every single gram of what you're eating every day. That doesn't count. I'm talking about set point as like, I'm still enjoying my life. I'm still being mindful. I'm able to go out to eat, not bring my own food. I'm able to go do this and not bring my own food or use a weight scale or food scale, excuse me, things like that. Because those are two separate things. If you are in a reverse diet, um, and, and I think this is why it's so important that we have been incorporating untracked meals, untracked days for our clients, yes. because it allows their body to understand that it's okay and that it will get fed when it wants to be fed. Um, and different things that maybe you wouldn't eat if you were diligently tracking every single gram, because that's when the problem starts to happen. Because even if you're eating in a surplus, if you are tracking down to the gram, everything that you eat, there is still a mental restriction on that. Um, and we're not telling clients to go blow it out, but part of this being able to, if you're doing that and then you kind of like get a little lax on that and start eating out a little more and things like that, you might see your weight start to climb. Mm -hmm. And that's because you never got out of that rigidity. And you just have to. And obviously we scale that appropriately for different clients based on their goals. Like I'm not going to tell everybody to have an untracked week. Um, but there are some clients that it gets to that point where you're deep enough and depending on how we're working through the relationship with food, that it is necessary for them to have three untracked days or yes. whatever the case may be, or just focusing on protein. Mm -hmm. Um, but you have to be able, and this is something that I have been growing in, um, is the, I, it's enjoying life. And I know that that sounds so basic, but for so long, I was just type A anal in all of my ways with this. And like I briefly mentioned, like I went to Vegas with my boyfriend a week and a half ago, literally my first trip in six years that I didn't bring anything besides protein powder with me. I didn't use a food scale. Um, I don't think, I think maybe we made one meal the whole weekend and the rest we ate out. Mm -hmm. And for so long, I would have thought of that as I'm being lazy. Um, I'm gross. Honestly, it's probably what I would have thought. And no, you're enjoying your life. And, and that's how you kind of get to this place of like where everything is just in homeostasis. You feel good mentally. Your training is good because you're fueled. Um, your nutrition is structured flexibility, I would say. Um, and that's kind of like what I'm after right now. And it's taken, like Lauren has said for herself as well, years. Like this is not a habit that gets developed overnight. And it's still hard. I still have days where I'll get on the scale even this morning. And I was like, hello. But then you think about your, your goals and you think about the fact that you're the only one that cares. Me, myself, I'm the only one who cares. And, you know, I, I don't, at the end of the day, it's like, how do you feel? You got to check in with yourself, reevaluate your goals, um, and just accept it. And if some things are getting in the way of that, as tracking your food, weighing yourself every day, things like that, kind of take a step back. And because that's the only way you're going to be able to get your body in this place where it feels healthy, it feels regulated, and it feels safe almost is what I would say. Like you're, 
it's not worried that you're going to restrict it. It's not worried that you're going to overfeed it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it takes time. And unfortunately for a lot of people, myself included have been there. It takes so much time that you just get to this place where you're like, screw it. I'm going to go back to what's comfortable and I'm just going to track everything. Yes. Or what happens to people is that they're trying to like the total opposite of that. Um, and then they've been so flexible their whole life that any kind of structure feels yeah. really hard. So then they go, Oh, I'm just going to go back to just all this flexibility. Whatever. Yeah. Um, so I think it's an important point to mention. And I know, obviously you know this, but when Lauren's saying, Hey, I'm going out to eat and I'm in Vegas for three days. And I tell her, Hey, just, you know, go there, be mindful, enjoy yourself. She has a lot of food education and a lot of food knowledge. And she's at a place where she understands kind of where her fullness is, where her satiety is, um, how she feels around food and her kind of that safety feeling around food. And for a lot of people, it kind of depends on where you're at with that, you know? And so if you're in a situation like that's what you have to work on. And so when Lauren says, I'm going to Vegas for three days, it doesn't mean that she's just blowing it out at every buffet. She actually has a healthy relationship with food, which then fuels her training, which then puts her in a quality mindset and it all kind of goes together. And I think that's really important too, to touch on for people because I think that sometimes, and that's really the hardest thing to convince the clients is, yeah, hey, we're either going from really, really rigid or really, really flexible. And yeah. that's where it's, it's such a struggle for people because most people, and I talked about this a little bit in my story the other day, black and white is very easy. Extremes yeah. are very easy. And whether people want to believe that or not, they are. The extreme sure. of I'm hyper diligent and I'm going to be on this perfect diet or I'm going to be completely off and eating like an ass face. Those yeah. are two really easy things to do. Kind of being moderate in the middle. Hey, I'm going to bring my protein powder. I'm going to prioritize that at every meal. I'm going to make sure that I'm drinking water and I'm going to stop when I'm like 80% full. That's yeah. like really hard. And that yeah. does not take one trip to learn how to do it. And this obviously, yeah. as you know, we've talked about, it takes three years, right? Yeah. Six years. Yes. And it, it's not something, and, and we're not putting a number on it so that you guys think that you have to hit a certain number. Like, um, you know, it, it could be six months or it could be six yeah. years. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Um, but it does, it's not something that, you know, if you would look at Lauren, you know, she's obviously very educated in this area. She has a lot of experience in this area. So it's not somebody that you would immediately think like, Oh, she has food issues. Yeah. But, and they weren't, crippling to the point where it's like, Hey, I'm so worried, but it's still something that's lingering there that you're still working through and you're constantly battling. Um, and that's where it's really important to kind of say, Hey, you know, understanding that this is going to take a long time. Yeah. It's definitely the hardest yeah. thing. Yes. And what I was also going to say too, is for somebody, so back to the person that has maybe been very, um, diligent, um, very structured, very, um, black and white, I guess when you, especially in the restriction, so let's talk about somebody that has been like in a deficit for a long time. When you start to incorporate these things, you might feel like you're overdoing it, even if you're not, simply because you feel full. And I know that that sounds bizarre, oh, no. um, but use I'll use myself for an example. If I'm in a deficit for too long and I literally go out and have um, something similar to what I would normally eat, so say like an omelet with some vegetables and then maybe I get a side of like pancakes or something and that's it I, I don't like overdo it quote unquote I'm not binging I'm not stuffing myself till I'm ill but if I finish that food simply because I haven't had that many carbs in a long time I haven't been able to allow myself to eat to the point of true truly being full um, because when you're in a deficit, there's a lot of times that you finish your meal and you're still hungry so you forget what it feels like to actually feel I'm like cringing thinking about that feeling um you start to forget to to know what it feels like to feel full mm -hmm. so when you feel that um even if you didn't kind of like quote unquote again blow it out you might feel uncomfortable and feel like you did and that's another mental barrier that I think kind of needs with practice and that's why a lot of times somebody might come back to us and be like oh I did such and such on my untracked meal I might ask for more information and come to find out that they had like a piece of French toast. And it's like, okay, you didn't binge. Yes. Your definition of binging is a lot different than somebody else's. Yes. Um, and again, it's just going to take time. And that's why we don't necessarily pull things like the untracked meal if it doesn't go just spectacular the first time where it feels uncomfortable because it's not going to. I'd say you for 99% trying. Trying. of clients who are coming out of a strict dieting phase, mm -hmm. the first untracked meal I add 
doesn't go very well. Yeah. And it's not because the client did anything wrong. It's not because, you know, me or you did anything wrong. Yeah. It's simply just the actual process of you have to go through and everybody struggles with either under it. They kind of either undershoot it or they overshoot yeah. it. And then it's like, Oh fuck, what do I do now? And that's yeah. where the coaching comes in. It's like, Hey, yeah, okay, for sure. let's talk about what happened. How did you feel yeah. beforehand? How did you feel afterwards? What were the things that were happening during the situation? Um, yeah. And that's why we really, really make tabs on those kinds of things. And it's not just like, Oh, go have an untrack meal. Oh, here are your macros. Here's this. No, no, no. Yeah. We are asking all these questions because that is the only way that we can actually make real change for our clients. Yep. And then I was going to kind of just to loop it back to the body set point. I do want to point out the fact that this does not only occur in people that are dieting down to the competition level lean. This can be for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren, you just froze. So I'm going to take a step back. This, this conversation could be for anybody who's dieting under a, like to a point that is uncomfortable for them. So again, for me, it was not dieting down for a show, but I did diet down to a weight that was not comfortable for me. And it's not comfortable for my body. Mm -hmm. um, the things that you, that I was having to do to be there are not sustainable for me long-term. So in coming out of that, I still experienced some similar things to somebody that took it even further than that. Um, but as Lauren said, like I have done this enough times and I do have education um, in this area. So I'm able to kind of, I think, handle it a little mm -hmm. easier. It gets easier the more that you do it because you kind of know what to expect. But yeah, I have clients right now that are doing some some like mini cuts and things like that. And these are things that I'm keeping in my mind because we know the physiology of it. And we know at some point, it's not about your mental strength anymore. It's literally about what your body is feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and all it wants to do is be at a homeostasis. And so when you're kicking it out of that, whether it's one or two pounds under that, you're setting off a bunch of these um, adaptations that are going to need to be worked through afterwards. So it's just something to keep in mind, whether you're prepping for six months or you're dieting for 12, it doesn't matter. Like these adaptations are still occurring um, and they're not just physiological, they're also psychological. So mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot in that, again, that is where the coaching comes in. And I think that because we ourselves have been there and more than a handful of times, um, it's, it's clear to us when we see something that kind of is a red flag in client check-ins um, and that will provoke us to maybe ask some more questions and try to get to the bottom of things. Um, but yeah, we, we take this very seriously. So for a lot of our clients, and I made a post about this the other day, they're coming to us relatively lean, a lot of them. So mm -hmm. to alter the set point, 10 pounds is probably not realistic. Yes. And great. You might love how you look at that 10 pounds lighter, but guess what? You're not going to do 280 minutes of steady state cardio for the rest of your life. And that might be what you have to do to get there. Yes. So um, it's kind of accepting that, knowing that your goal does not have to be physique related at all times. And like Lauren has added jujitsu. I started training CrossFit. There are way more things out there that can um, kind of like bring feelings of success and progress than just progress photos. Yeah. There's nothing like getting my face beat in like every week that <laughs> to really just incite <laughs> self-love. Uh, yeah. Actually, Honestly, it's been one of the best things that I've done for myself. Um, and I fucking love it. Um, and it is yeah. cool to do something that is not at all related to what I look like. Yes. Um, obviously it is all about performance and yeah. it, well, it's, Jiu-Jitsu is very mental and physical. So yeah, it's like yeah. a, it's like a mental game as well as like, you're know, physically just like fighting somebody off of you. Um, yeah. so it's really challenging in like a lot of ways. And it's been really cool to go in there and like, I have, I'm starting at like the literal bottom of the bucket. Like, yeah, I couldn't start any lower or be any worse. I have <laughs> zero background in this. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, some people come in like, Oh, I used to wrestle. Oh, I used to do this. And like, you kind of have a, like, I did yeah. nothing that was like yeah. this. So starting at the very bottom and saying, wow, it all has to do with like my effort and my ability has been yeah. a really cool switch that I've made. Um, and also just over time, you know, you have to realize, okay, where are my goals? And like you said, I think you made a really good point. Your goals always don't have to be physique related, but even if you have goals outside of physique goals, you can still look better. So doing yeah. CrossFit and doing jujitsu do not make either of us look any worse. It actually no. <laughs> a um, something that is positive for our body, but you just have to fuel differently and you have to just live differently. Yes. Um, and so the cool thing with, 
you know, as far as like, we, you know, we've talked about with the set point stuff and it is, you know, to kind of tie that back in, you do have to look for different things going on. Right. Um, you know, for females, do you have a menstrual cycle? And yeah. you know, for some people that's going to be a very, very, um, there's a, that's a whole different kind of podcast, but, um, you know, very up and down for some people anyway. So that could be not even tied necessarily to their body fat. Um, Mm -hmm. but in general, you know, if you, if you're somebody who's had a consistent period, then all of a sudden you stop having one, um, or you just start to have all these feelings of very like Mm -hmm. down-regulated hormones. And that's really the biggest thing that I see with clients who have dieted over and over again, is just really, really suppressed sex hormones and really suppressed thyroid hormones. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are some things that take a really long time to come back as well, which is another frustrating thing. And again, a different kind of podcast, but, um, so there's that and which will in turn make you, you know, feel a lot worse. And then, you know, training, like how is your actual training intensity? and your recovery. Um, you know, are you enjoying life? You know, like how, how are you around food? And, um, we're all about pushing people when they want to diet. Like if we're dieting and we actually just did a podcast on this, it was either the one before this or two ago, um, on kind of that, like no options mentality. Like when you are dieting, like you have to flip that switch. And that is why we preach taking a long time off so that when it is time, it's go time it's fucking go time. And yeah. we're, we're not messing around. And I think that it is really important for people to understand that as well. But knowing that kind of what you're getting yourself into and knowing kind of the situations that you're going to be facing and really putting your, your number one goals up there. Okay. Are you dieting for a physique show or do you want to just like look good for a photo shoot, which is a completely different look. And we can kind of stop yeah. before we get past that yeah. really, really like shitty point And you're mm-hmm. still going to look amazing. Yeah. Um, So I was also going to say two things, actually. So one was that Lauren kind of commented on at the very beginning is, and changing your set point doesn't necessarily have to mean changing the scale weight, but changing the body comp at that weight. So I just want to reiterate that because um, depending on the activity that you're doing, yeah, depending on like body recomp is, it happens. um, And we've both seen it in ourselves. So the longer that you do kind of, um, diet surplus diet surplus um with incorporating some flexibility and and adding some different types of training and stuff like that you can see significant changes to your physique without any change on the scale and then i also think what we should maybe do a podcast on is this desire to um have these kind of extreme physique goals while trying to have these strength goals and is that possible because it's not And I think that that would just be a good one to do because especially for females, it's like, oh, I want to look like X and I want to train like Y. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Those don't go together. And something that I have found personally, which has been a great learning experience is I can hold these lower weights while I'm training hypertrophy and for bodybuilding goals, Mm -hmm. because it's not quite as strenuous, I would say. Mm -hmm. So you might've experienced this with jujitsu when I switched to CrossFit. I cannot eat like a squirrel and continue to go into these training no. sessions. I can't. I eat um, so, so much. Like, I will literally, my body, after like one day, if I'm underfed and I go train, the next day, yeah. my body aches so bad. And yeah. you can kind of get away with that if you're just doing high, yes. high volume, high rep, low weight. You cannot do that with these more um, physically demanding it's just very different. Aerobic capacity, strength, power output sports. Yeah. You can't. And it can be a tough pill to swallow, but it is the truth. And just really reassessing what do you want? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's always the number one thing that you have to come back to. Um, yep. What are your, what are your main goals? And if it is something that is super extreme, like a physique competition, mm-hmm. you're going to have to say, I'm getting very, very below my body's natural set point, which means I have to fucking tough it out during the prep, but also I'm not going to maintain at this really, really low position to where your, your body fat is so low that you're just falling apart essentially. Yep. And then other things to consider is like, Hey, how far do you want to push past that set point for the goal? Like, is, is that one or two pounds worth it? Is it it worth it? Literally it could be two pounds. I'm not kidding. And then like, I mean, I've over and over and over again, where myself Dead. or clients and you know you're feeling really good and then all of a sudden you hit this new low and then it's like holy hell and yep. comp client it's like okay buckle up let's fucking go mm-hmm. if it's not there's no reason like hey let's try to maintain here for a little bit you know hit whatever goal you want as far as whether it's the photo shoot or the event da 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 but we're not going to stay we're not really going to go past this because we don't need to yeah 
that's, that's such a good point. I, I, yeah. I a, literally just told Louie the other day, I'm like, 135, I feel pretty good, but I start to feel pretty fatigued. 133, two pounds later, mm-hmm. I am literally a sloth. I am a broken sloth yeah. because my body hurts. I'm tired all the time. I, think so. I don't want to talk to you. And it's two pounds. And yeah. it's very hard to like wrap your head around. Like, why is this so hard? But so hard. your body is so freaking smart. Good luck trying to outsmart it. You won't. Yeah. You won't. won't. So (laughs) I know this was like a very roundabout conversation with (laughs) points and, you know, kind of changing all that. But if you guys liked it, we would really appreciate if you could leave a subscribe, leave a review, the whole jazz. Um, All of that helps us, you know, get seen by more people so that we can reach more people. I hate always asking, but I'm going to do it. And um, yeah, do it. So if you guys, (laughs) yeah, shameless plug, just go there. Um, stop it, review it, whatever you got to do. And um, I actually don't know how people review things on Spotify. I know iTunes, like I totally know how to review things on yeah. iTunes. I'm not sure about Spotify, but in case you're listening on there, um, <laughs> for more information on, you know, podcasts, really great articles, um, just different resources, books that we have and coaching, you can go to team We have a bunch mm-hmm. of really great stuff on there. Yep. Yep. Oh, I was, you're good. pointing. I was like, all right, you got, you're going <laughs> to, no, I'm just fucking with you. You're doing like guys, finger sorry. guns. You're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to go to team logo She said, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to end on a, that's what she said joke. <laughs> and we really appreciate you guys. And we will catch you next week. Bye.